Hi there guys, welcome back to Byte Reviewer. This time we're having a look at the next bit Robin. And if you're wondering what a Robin is, well that's really okay. The story behind the phone is basically a bunch of people who used to work for the really big companies, think Google, Apple, Amazon and HTC, decided that the Android ecosystem was getting a little dull, it's a bit boring, so it's time to brighten it up. And not only did they do that in terms of look, but also in terms of how the software works. But we'll get to the software a bit later. And I have to admit, I was really, really excited to get this phone. And a lot of that was purely down to how it looks. The Robin is this really nice thin slice of soft touch plastic. And it's kind of lovingly put together a real focus on standing out from the classic Android black slab. And I've had more people ask me about this phone than any other I've ever owned. So that's saying something right there as well. I mean, I haven't seen a phone like this since Nokia were doing interesting things with the Lumia line before Microsoft brought it out. So it's really nice to see that design ethos come back a little. And I mean, even the box is unique. It opens like a book and you know from the outset that you're getting something quite different. The same attention has been placed on the SIM eject tool, which is this cool little cloud. And even the plug is a good looking thing, despite having to pay a little extra for one. Anyway, on with the hardware. The first thing I want to bring up is the fingerprint reader. It's placed on the side of the phone and despite being a little too flush to the point where it's quite difficult to find when you're not looking, damn is it fast. Did you miss that? Okay, here we go again. Ready? Boom, straight in. We're also rocking USB Type-C of course, so we're ready for the future, which is nice to see. However, the main pain point for the Robin, in my opinion anyway, is the screen. It's a full HD IPS display and initially I was quite pleased with it, but on closer inspection you can see horizontal lines across the screen if you look close enough. It shows up more on a white screen and you have to look really, really close. In fact, I couldn't get the camera close enough to see. But it's a real shame, I understand a phone priced at $399 has to make compromises somewhere, but the screen shouldn't be the place for it. On the plus side, the dual front facing speakers are nothing short of excellent, they're loud, punchy and easily some of the best I've heard from a smartphone. In terms of power, the Robin is equipped with the Snapdragon 808 Hexacore backed up with 3GB of RAM and Android 6 Marshmallow in tow, with all of its delicious improvements on board. However, it's a software which might be the most interesting part of the Robin for some people. It claims to never run out of storage, so how exactly does that really work? Well, the Robin has 32GB of onboard and 100GB of included cloud storage, and this is all managed for you by the software. It intelligently decides what you are and aren't using and moves data to the cloud based on your usage. So if you don't use an app for a while, the Robin will offload that app into the cloud so it frees up storage on your phone. On that app again, the Robin will beam it back to you exactly where you left it off. It's the same with photos too. Every photo you take is offloaded to the cloud and then beamed back to you when you view it. You can pin apps to the phone as well if you know you're going to need them at some point and don't want it to offload to the cloud. There's also an app looking icon on the right that shows you what apps are archived, pinned or just a list of all your apps as well. It's a really interesting way of working a device and while 32GB of onboard storage might be enough for most users, I'm sure people with huge amounts of data would be happy they don't have to worry quite so much about it. The Robin is running a custom launcher as well and for the most part it's quite nice. They've managed to fit the software to feel like the phone in a strange way with minty colours throughout and the 808 chip keeps things running along pretty smoothly. App switching is quick and I didn't ever feel like I was waiting around for anything. However the main bugbear of the skin is the lack of an app drawer. I've managed to get around this with extensive folder use but I really kind of don't understand why. Um, also you can't place widgets on the home screen, they're actually hidden away in a pinch to access kind of menu which for me anyway almost defeats the point of having them at all. But in fairness to Nextbit you can get around this with a custom launcher. You can use Nova or something for instance and if you really wanted to you could flash a totally different ROM to the Robin. The bootloader is unlocked as standard and the phone is still covered by warranty if you manage to muck it up. So that's pretty awesome of them. If you're a mobile gamer then there isn't really anything to worry about here. Graphics look nice and crisp and the general frame rate stays pretty high. Although I did notice the phones get hotter than any other I've tested after playing for a while. It's nothing scary but it's rather noticeable. In terms of camera we're equipped with a 13 megapixel sensor and you'd probably think from that that the next bit Robin is a pretty standard affair as far as mid-range Android phones go. And to be honest you'd probably be right for the most part. Images are quite accurate in terms of colour reproduction but they do lack a certain punch that other phones deliver. Details are kept quite well when you zoom in and even in the dark things aren't too bad. However, the worst part about the whole Robin experience in my opinion is the speed of the camera. To cut things short, it's painfully slow. There's a good 1-2 to two second gap after pressing the button to capturing the photo even in excellent lighting conditions and far too many times I've missed a shot because of this. 
The good news is Nextbit are aware of this and there's an update coming in where they mentioned they've solved this issue, so hopefully that will be with us soon. I was impressed with the 5 megapixel front facing camera however, it's super wide and always worked well for squeezing in lots of people to the shot. I'm barely extending my arm in this shot and it still gets everything in. It's still played by that slow shutter speed but you can get so much in, this guy knows it. Unfortunately battery performance was a mixed bag for me as well. Some days I'd find myself charging the device around 7pm to make sure I got through the evening and other times I'd be okay until the day was over. So it'll get you through a day on mid usage but expect to charge your phone in the evening if you're a bit more of a power user. Mercifully Quick Charge 2 is here so you can juice up quickly when you're in a pinch. So it's fair to say I was a little disappointed with this phone. I was really hoping it would turn into my daily driver. I liked the design of it that much that I was almost willing to go for it but the camera, screen and battery just don't measure up for me. On the plus side, I think it's an interesting step forward into how phones will store data in the future. The smart cloud storage sets it apart from the pack, along with its design, and damn those speakers, they're so good. I'll finish by saying I actually wish Google would take a few notes from Nextbit here. If material design were ever a physical thing, I would say the Nextbit Robin is probably the best example of that. For instance, if the Nexus 5X had this fun design but kept its current internals and camera, then maybe we'd be looking at something really special. Anyway, thanks for watching this review guys and stay tuned for more tech and something really exciting coming too as well. I'll catch you in the next one.